Our topic today, choosing a button compass. It won't kill you. Hi guys. Welcome to the Doug Shoe Bushcraft Channel. One of these things is not like the other. What was that, Sesame Street? That was a long time ago for me. But in any case, we have one, two, three, four, five compasses. They're all pointing that way. So I'm pretty confident now that's magnetic north. Hence the red arrow I put down there. This one, it's all compass by key gear. And it's uh, pointing southwest. It's kind of an issue. Key gear. Let's see. Trying to hold it as level as I can. Just pointing south. Oh, here we go. I see movement. Wait for it. No, it's southwest. I mean, north, uh, northwest, sorry. Okay, so let's say somebody just carried that with them and they didn't know much about navigation, so they're looking at some sort of map or they're going by memory and trying to use that to navigate. That's pointing southwest. So they're going to walk that way, likely getting more and more lost. And I, I would tend to avoid any sort of button compass. Here's an unbranded one picked up somewhere. Okay, now that one's giving me an issue. Okay, there's two problems with this in my mind. One, it's too small. I would generally avoid anything that small. Um, second, it's liquid filled, which in my opinion is a bad idea for, for a compass that small. You can get away with it with a larger compass. But liquid fill doesn't make it more accurate. What liquid fill does, it makes a needle move more slowly. So if you're walking and trying to get a reading at the same time, or if you're in a vehicle, it uh, dampens it a little bit. Uh, but the problem is, you have a compass that's small and a tiny magnet in there. It uh, doesn't have enough energy to uh, work against the oil. And this is... Uh, late summer right now or in the 70s as the weather gets colder the oil gets thicker and I've, I've been carrying this little thing for a while is just to test it out and uh, in the winter it's even more sticky in the summer I could use a little bit so you do have motion but it's just a bad idea Things like that uh, get you lost. Oh, here's another one. Let's see. Five and one survival whistle. So he's got a compass. You've got uh, match case, whistle, and that's supposed to be some sort of ferro rod type thing, I guess. They're calling it a flint. <laughs> here's one out of the package. See how that works. That is pointing north. That yeah, pointing north. And it's liquid filled. It's a little bit bigger than this one, but still, I'd rather have air filled, not liquid filled for something that size. That one's okay for. Uh, Warm weather. Have to test it again in cold weather. Check the whistle. It's all right. Just this endless P rattling. It's a P type whistle. Has a lanyard to put around my neck. That would drive me insane. Maybe I'm not that far normally. Maybe it's a short drive. <laughs> um, okay. So I, I wouldn't recommend this one. 
I wouldn't recommend this one. Sorry, key gear. Maybe they make other stuff that's good. And I'm just testing this one. Maybe I got a bum one. I didn't test 500 of key gears, compasses, and, and this unbranded one. Wouldn't recommend it. Okay, so a lot of people are really determined that they want to have a tiny, tiny compass in order to put it in an Altoids tin survival kit or other small survival kit. Um, I'd say in general avoid button compasses but some people want one like the size of your thumbnail. Okay so this one I've carried for a while, had it for a while and I would recommend it. And as a piece of survival gear it does have some history to it. It goes back to like World War II, even I believe World War I, where uh, the Allies and also uh, the other side, they had little compasses. Uh, they've been called escape compasses because uh, they could be easily concealed. And these might be called button compasses because they're about the size of a coat button, um, but also one technique was actually hide them in a uniform button, a soldier's uniform button. A lot of them are hollow brass at the time. Uh, not sure how effective that would be, but they did it. And this, this one, I'm going to recommend this particular model. This is the combat ready glow in the dark compass. And I'm calling it an escape compass reproduction. I'm not sure they are. But it has this uh, lanyard so you can put it around your neck if you want to or tie it to something. And the case is brass or brass colored. Uh, but it has this uh, paint or something over it to make it less shiny. Uh, and then the dial is glow in the dark. Glow in the dark paint. And this is air filled. And if you hold it somewhat level, it turns really well. And for the size of it, it is accurate. So if you must have one, like the size of a button or your thumbnail, uh, that's a combat ready glow in the dark compass. And that's the only one this point I can recommend it's around that size and generally I would go bigger okay this one it's the Skywalker compass with safety whistle and lanyard okay it's a bright orange I think they come in different colors this one's bright orange got a bright yellow lanyard so if you drop it it's kind of visible and this here built in is the compass ah yeah this here built in is the whistle and that's relatively loud and there's no p in there so no rattle so that's good and that was uh five dollars i found that open box of five dollars the combat ready uh go on the dark compass uh, was seven dollars and I'll put links in the description so you can have the names and uh, maybe one link where you can find it really I'd recommend this okay this one is highly recommended you might have seen this in a lot of my videos it's not all that big I mean let's have a comparative size here okay that's about size of a relatively small men's wristwatch but that is just so accurate you have to hold them level but this is pretty forgiving I believe it's air filled I can't see any liquid and just that changes so quickly self correct so quickly to point north so this one is a Sunto M9 wrist compass Sunto is S-U-U-N-T-O, Sunto MC2 wrist compass. Comes with a Velcro strap to wear it like a watch. 
And $27 isn't that much. I mean, it's not a huge investment. I mean, if you're at a part of the world, 27 US is a lot of money. I mean, no shame in that. There are cheaper options, but just saying in uh, the US, UK, somewhere like that, it's not that much of an investment. But really, in your pack, should have something this size. Even a cheap compass that size, um, if the movement is quality enough so it doesn't stick, usually just uh, the size, that's getting over an inch closer to two inches diameter here. Um, usually you're good. But this is a quality compass. I'm not going to go into all the features. It has a mirror. It looks like that because uh, I stash a, a magnifier in there, a Fresnel lens magnifier. I cut it down to fit. Um, I'm not going to go over all the features, but I'm recommending this, highly recommended. It's a Sunto MC2 and it's around $40. Doesn't weigh very much. Okay, I could see how it's kind of large if someone wants to put together a pocket survival kit or mini survival kit. I can understand that, but I mean, my shirt pocket is this big, my pants pocket. I mean, it doesn't take up any room in my pack to speak of. And uh, it's it's so light, I'm not gonna notice a difference in my pack. So my opinion, everyone should always have, if not this one, something like that. Like not a button compass, not a tiny compass, like a real compass for lack of another term and it's good to have more than one compass okay so that's maybe why in addition to this if I didn't have this strapped to my wrist I might carry something like that because I've had cases I'm way out in the woods and uh, I start to doubt my compass and that could just be me getting weird but also, reverse polarity is a thing. Whereas you have a good compass, it can happen to any compass. I'm saying I highly recommend this one. I'm saying this is the best one of the lot I'm showing you today. But this compass, I don't care how much you spend for it or uh, how good the name is, any compass can point backwards because it's based on being a magnet, right? We know this, it's physics. And any magnet can suddenly switch directions. It usually happens when you get it too close to a magnet. And a lot of gear, a lot of survival gear and camping gear is uh, has a magnet on it, like flashlights, so you can stick them to things and the list goes on. Just a lot of stuff is magnetized. And, and when I'm on the trail, I really don't like stuff like that at all. I, I don't want to be carrying a magnet. Um, if I do, i got to be careful with it. Because you get it near a compass, and it just passes close to the compass once by accident. You're not thinking about it. And suddenly, instead of pointing north, the compass is pointing south. Okay, that's one issue. The other issue is, let's say I have a flashlight with a powerful magnet. I put it in my pocket, and my keys are in there. Or my uh, steel for my flint and steel kit is in there. I can accidentally magnetize another piece of gear, whether it's keys or whatever it is, anything ferrous. And then I, I leave the actual magnet at home, let's say, but that other piece of gear, I don't know why I magnetize it. See what I'm saying? And uh, then on the trail, get that too close to my compass and it can be pointing the other direction. And also what's happened to me um, several times is that just for no known reason. Nothing on me is magnetized. Suddenly, uh, a compass is pointing in the wrong direction. And uh, sometimes you just don't know. It can be a hard shock, I believe, anyway. I also believe there's, there's uh, things magnetized in nature, or there's magnetic fields. Well, that's the other thing. You can get too close to like a, uh, something uh, high voltage, I think. Uh, maybe a really powerful radio, I'm not sure. But in any case, however it happens, you, you have one compass, it suddenly starts pointing south rather than north. And, and there's other ways to, to know. 
Um, but even for someone that knows navigation and how, how to navigate without a compass, if it's cloudy, or especially at, at night it's cloudy, and you're in a place with a thick tree canopy, it, it can be tough to know. Um, also, some sort of emergency situation, it can be sick, uh, tired, exhausted, starved, dehydrated, freaking out, <laughs> whatever it is, uh, somebody shooting at you, whatever, whatever the case may be, you really want to be uh, heading in the right direction and uh, you end up, your compass is messing up, you go in the wrong direction. So I'm just saying one compass that's a proper size, uh, works well, it's good to have, but it's good to have two. So for whatever reason you dealt one, you dealt the others. Just a, another thing to know is, is I'm holding them and setting them out for display. If I get the compasses close to each other, they uh, mess each other up, right? You can see that, right? How they're spinning. Because compasses are magnets, right? <laughs> So even that's not a good idea. I, I think a lot of the information I gave you in this video could keep someone from getting into trouble or even save their life. And if you agree, uh, please share. Share on social media or wherever you'd like. And also, if uh, there's a button compass that you can recommend that you know of, uh, please leave that in the comments. A lot of the comments people have been leaving are, are very valuable, very valuable information, and I appreciate that. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Ephesians 6, 18.